is fixing her cowl. Hi, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm Joanne from Magpie's Cottage. I'm Amy. I can see my face. I'm so used to wearing a mask, you know. Well, yeah, you know, got mine hanging here. Yeah, I just took mine off because I put the cowl on. It's the Descent cowl for, yes. you know, made after RGB. So I thought I better wear it today in memory of. And if I would have thought about it, I'd have grabbed mine too. Yeah. So I, I have the itch to knit a second one now, so mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah, this one I modified that I made it narrower so that in the winter I can wear it up like this in cold weather. Yes. Um, Cause I have asthma and I don't like that cold near my, my nose and mouth. So uh, it's probably not the best to be wearing right now indoors. No, probably not. And see now <laughs> mine, because it's not, this where it's folded in creates a nice kind of ridge or mm -hmm, you know fold nice over scoop. yeah, yeah and it's a nice scoop neck mm -hmm. it's really pretty on um yeah. and so lots of different things you can mm -hmm. do with that but yep. i'm gonna yeah. need my second one black and white oh okay yeah so. i think i'm gonna take it off just because it it's, is yeah very well warm. that's right and it's 80 degrees out there so yeah <laughs> So, Nobody yep. wants to wear a cowl in 80 degree weather. No. No. But so. since we're talking cowls, let's talk about this one. Okay. This is my FO of the week. Okay. And it is um, designed by Hohi Locatelli. Okay. It is the three color cashmere, although I didn't knit it in cashmere. I did knit it in fingering weight though. There it is. Go like this. See? Well, you have three colors. I think I do. that's the important. We're back. We're back. Sorry Phone call was that. a good thing. So, oh my gosh, is my hair a mess? I just never said no. Okay. okay. Back to where we were at. We were yeah. talking colors. So yes. this is um, a hohi pattern, and it's three colors, and you start with stripes, but even in these big stripes, there's eyelets, and then there's skinny stripes, and then there's a little texture with a pearl bump thrown every now and then, so a little bit of lace, and then some more stripes. Cool. And I, I will tell you, it was a pretty quick knit. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't believe how fast this went. And I I used Miss Babs for it because okay. these were leftovers from um, other things that I had knit. And I love how soft this is. Mm -hmm. And I was, nice. you know, the other thing about it is, is that I wasn't afraid to go down a needle size on this. Okay. I literally, um, in the pattern, Hohe calls for like a two and a half. Uh-huh. I, or a three. Two and a half, three. I went down to a two. Okay. I knit this on a two, and I'm going to tell you, I love the fabric that it created. Good. So not being, you know, get, getting that fabric um, kind of dense mm -hmm. once in a while is not a bad thing. If your yarn is soft enough. If it's dense and you got stiff yarn. Okay, well, it, that's a different story. Yeah, then it wouldn't have worked. But this, because you had a good draping yarn. Yeah, this really does drape nice, and I just love this. So I'm looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. I am going to have to find something to wear it with. Because mm -hmm. I don't have any, I mean, I have these colors in my closet, but nothing mm -hmm. that I would put this cowl over. Okay. So, I don't know what I'm going to yeah. do. I'm going to look for something. Yeah. Something but I can't wait to wear this one. Or, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and I, I'm very happy with it. Good. Softness-wise, everything. That's good. So, that's my that's FO for the week. It got off the needles last Sunday already, and I blocked it. Okay. I was not going to mess around. I do not have an FO. You've been busy. Yeah. We were gone on our trip for three days. I did start another one of those broken rib hats on the trip, but I ended up driving the whole way there oh. and back, so I had no no car time to knit. No, that's not good. I hate mm -hmm. it when you have to be the driver the whole way. Mm -hmm. You know, switching off is good. Yeah. So. But, yeah, it didn't work out that way, so no. I drove. When I travel with Ron, I make him do all the driving, too, though. Oh. <laughs> because, well, yeah. that's, that's knitting time, man. Don't mess yeah. with my knitting time. Yep, so. so I didn't have that. So I got about this far on a broken rib hat. And that's all. Okay, well, I'm into short in instant gratification product projects right now. Well, yeah, that's what hats are for sure. Yeah, so I'm thinking I'm going to cast mine on maybe this weekend and okay. um, get a hat done. And Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to finish this cowl probably by tonight. So, Well, you might as well show it. We're talking okay. about cowls. Okay, we're talking cowls. This is a test knit. So I'm going to get my string arms. Um, it's color work so I'm gonna hold up close all right it's a test knit for Laura Ayler and the bottom is knit I did this on a six 
and the first two of the red um, alternating part, the first two were on the six, the next two are on the five, and now I'm on a four. Oh, okay. So this gets narrower as you go up mm -hmm. because you're knitting with a smaller needle. Oh, so okay. I've got, there's two more sections, um, the size three needle section and the size two needle section. Okay. And then I'm alternating here. This is my skein of crazy. You can tell okay. um, in the center it goes to red. This is um, Stonehenge crazy. It's been pretty crazy out there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really love Stonehenge fiber. Mm -hmm. um, they're out of Michigan. Their worsted is really nice. But what this is, is plied. It's like their four ply, but plied as a two ply um, mm -hmm. with alternating colors. And it just gets mashed together. Yeah. So it's on the ball, mill ends, it's right. mill ends. But what's fun is that like, this is supposed to, in the original, this is the first section is in a, one color. The second one, every time you change needles, you're changing mm -hmm. colors. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't want to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm using one solid and a ball and a skin of crazy. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, you know, I didn't want it matchy, matchy, perfect. See, I could have taken my balls of crazy and made little balls. Yeah. And then could. done it color-wise section, but I opted not to. And so now, but then I had this real, my next section in here was lots of this with the lime green in it. And while I like mm -hmm. lime green, I decided I needed more color. So in order to really get a true crazy effect, which was what I was going for, mm -hmm. I wound off the green. Oh, okay. And, and the green and blue part. And now I'm at this, I don't know, blue and gray part. Uh -huh. And I am going to, you know, work till I get sick of looking at blue and gray. And then uh -huh. hopefully I'll be almost to this red part. Okay. And then um, I have, so then I'll do a section with this. I want to make sure that I have enough of this red to do almost the whole two-part section. Yeah. Or the 12, it's 12 rows. Um, because when I get to like the eighth or ninth row before the end, I'm going to, I want to have this in and this in. But then I'm going to finish with a real skinny section of this same red with a purple, which I happen to have mm -hmm. sitting on a leftover ball at home. Okay. What I do after I start with my crazy, just because I love this stuff, I love the feel of the yarn. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice sport weight and can be used for all kinds of things. I will wind my crazy into balls okay. of just that one color. Mm -hmm. So I have the, I have... None of the red and green left. That's all of that was on here. Mm -hmm. And then I have a pretty good sized hunk of the, this blue with the lime green. And I know that there's too much of this blue mm -hmm. and gray on here, you know, to, yeah. to finish it. So I will finish with, maybe what I'll do is I'll get to an even section. I'll knit this until I'm to like the, like the size two section, mm -hmm. maybe. And then start the size two section with the red. And then when I get up to like the eighth or ninth row, switch to my other little leftover so that purple. I end with okay. it with the purple. Okay. Then that'll really have the crazy effect. I'm mm -hmm. playing with these colors, okay? Sure. Um, the crazy um, makes a really cool, oh, it's the Andrea Mowry shift, the cowl. What's the mm -hmm. cowl one? You did the sweater. Mm -hmm. um, Night shift. Shifty? Shifty's the sweater. Okay. I think it's either night shift or just the shift, one or the other. It, 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 it's, yeah. it's in her, her series of shift. But yeah. what a lot of people are doing is using crazy. Um, three. It takes three yeah. skeins to do it. But they're using crazy mm -hmm. um, to do the contrast. Sure. So um, crazy's fun. Yeah. So I'm going to finish this tonight. Only because okay. I'm not doing anything else. So I'm going to stay home and I'm going to get this done. And okay. then tomorrow I'm casting on some mittens. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to finish those mittens probably on Sunday. And then maybe on Sunday I'm going to do my hat. Okay. Because I just got to keep on that flow. Mm -hmm. Quick projects. Yeah. I do have a shawl on the needles. Um, I'll show you that next week. That'll be done by next week. Okay. 
All right, I'm still working on my shawl. Um, I think I showed it last week, yes. but now I got all the colors in it. I just love this. this um, the colors are just, the way they flow yeah. into each other are, is still just the fun. Needles, so it's a little hard to show. But this is as big as it gets. It's over 300 stitches now. Um, it's supposed to bind off right now after, well, no, two more rows of white. But I don't want white on the end, so I'm going to add an extra two rows of the dark green and bind off in the dark green. So, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So this will be done next week by next week, Thursday. Oh, too. for sure, I think so, because it only needs two rows of white, two rows of green, and bind off. So that should be done by next week. We're all about the finished objects here. Yep, yep. Mm. Yeah, so... Oh, before I forget, let me tell you right now, Becky Wilson, if you're watching, remember to call us. We announced you as the winner last week, and I haven't gotten an email from you yet. Email us at info at magpiescottage.com, and uh, give us your mailing address, and I'll mail out the bag to you. Okay? Please call us, Becky. Yeah. Yeah, we want to send you your gift. And then, so. of course, coming October, we'll have another drawing for yep. a different bag. Mm-hmm. So, Joanne's got a stash of bags for this. Yes. yes so, do. you know, I was telling um, my students, it's funny, I come here and I tape a podcast, you know, every mm -hmm. week, and people, like, I, I, I just don't know how many people really watch podcasts. But mm -hmm. it was funny because I was thinking an awful lot about podcasting this week. Okay. Because I had a conversation with my students in my online world. And it was uh -huh. kind of funny. We were talking about a character in a book that we're reading. Uh huh. And this character is labeled an angry child. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, in the book, the kid's eight. And I'm dealing with nine and ten-year-olds. And I said, so you guys are experts on what it might be to be eight. How does an eight-year-old my work? <laughs> so I'm trying to get them to think about this character and what it would mean to be an angry child. And they talked about getting angry with their parents and that stuff. And it was so funny because I threw out the, the, the idea. Well, say you want to watch TV and your mom and dad tells, wants you to clean your room. You're going to be angry about that, right? Because you'd rather watch TV. And it was so funny. Now, I'm talking to like 15 kids, right? Mm -hmm. Almost all, well, I don't watch TV. I don't watch TV. Oh. They watch podcasts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even my six-year-old grandson. He's always on YouTube. He's never on TV. It was just blowing my mind yeah, how yeah. little kids do not watch TV. And mm -hmm. here I thought I was trying to connect with them, you know, mm -hmm. and get them to think about, um, you know, having a TV privilege taken away. Well, mm -hmm. I have decided I just dated myself. <laughs> yeah, yep. No, you are not watching TV. Go clean that room. My mom said it plenty, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, yeah, no, you got, I said, so I had to modify, you mm -hmm. know, and I said, well, what if they just said we're taking your tablet away? No yeah. YouTube or no video gaming or, yeah. you know, we'll take your tech away. Yeah. Oh, well, that was a problem. <laughs> that, yeah, that's where the problem comes in. Yeah, Lucas will actually cry if you tell him no technology. Or they say no electronics to him, and then he'll cry. He's very upset. Well, and that's kind of where, you know, we were trying to get these kids to think about, mm -hmm. you know, what would make a kid. I mean, we, we, what I was trying to do is get the connection in their head about, you know, you, kids can get angry about things too, mm -hmm. but do you stay angry? Yeah. You, no, you don't over being told, you know, you get your mm -hmm. tech taken away and you deal with your consequences of why you mm -hmm. got your tech taken away, but... You get it back, and yeah. You, but and even if it takes a couple of days to get it back because you really did something naughty, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you don't stay angry forever, right? Okay, and so why? What would it take? What I'm trying to get at them as that this is not a kid who's just a little angry with his parents. Yeah. Okay. There's more to this kid's story, and that's what I'm trying to get them to see. And obviously, as the grown-up reader in the group, I know that, mm -hmm. you know, and and I'm you know, but. It's all of this idea of studying character. So, I mean, but it was fascinating. Yeah. And, well, no, I don't really watch TV. So, yeah, if they took TV away from me, it wouldn't be a problem. I'm going, oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you going to do, right? Yep. Yep. And the silly thing is, is you know what they watch? They, like, watch 
people that are taping themselves playing video games. Right. Or that's like his favorite thing to watch. Cora will watch kids playing with Barbies. Oh, okay. Yeah, she watches kids play with their toys. Well, I just looked at uh -huh. her one day and I said, why don't you just go play with your toys? Yeah. <laughs> right. But on the other hand, some of the things she sees, I can see in her that it does inspire creativity. Okay. So it's not a total loss. Mm hmm But, oh, excuse me. It was crazy. Yeah. You know what they want, you know, and 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 I mean, she gets up, and you know, when I my boys were little, when I was, I don't, I don't know if I did it so much because I can't remember that far back, but when my boys were little, they would get up like on a Saturday morning mm -hmm. at TV, they get up in their jammies, they go sit down and watch TV. I mean, they try to sneak in front of the mm -hmm. TV with their bowl of cereal, you know, if I didn't catch them, mm -hmm. and they'd be eating, you know, they just sit down on the couch and eat a bowl of cereal and watch TV all Saturday morning. Yeah, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. My kids, too. But now my grandkids, it's YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Laura, K Cora will put the kickstand up on her on her tablet, on the case. Uh -huh. Put the kickstand up and just uh, watch that while she chows down her cereal mm -hmm. or whatever. But it's just crazy when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So totally different world. Yeah. Definitely. Hmm. Those are my so. profound thoughts for this week. You mm -hmm. have any profound thoughts for this week? No, I got a Roomba story, though. Oh, no! <laughs> what did Roomba well, do now? You know, last week, I had left this tripod on the table. So when I came in at the beginning of this week, I went to put it away. And I couldn't find that little black sleeve that it goes oh, in. Oh, yeah. So I was like, well, where is that thing? And then all of a sudden this morning, I get a message, clean the roller on Roomba. So I get in this morning, and Roomba's sitting right behind us here, and she has that black bag twisted all around her wheel. I don't know where she found it, because I could not find that <laughs> earlier in the week. I was looking under the table and in all these chairs. I could not find that bag, but Roomba found it for me this well, morning. thank you, Roomba. <laughs> Oh, for yeah. heaven's sakes. Yeah. The things that Roomba eats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we got the, the bag back now. Well, that's good. I, I mean, because, mm -hmm. you know, well, yeah, when you were setting up, you took it out of the bag. I watched you do it. Yeah, yep. But it was it was gone for Wednesday and Thursday and found this morning. <laughs> oh, Goodness gracious. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, no other stories this week, I don't think. I went on my trip over the weekend. That was nice. Met up with my cousin and visited with her for a while. We came home. Not much else going on. Oh, I, I realized something. I did not drive my car. Oh. It was funny. I drove out here last week, Friday. Mm -hmm. I don't think I went anywhere last Saturday. I mm -hmm. stayed home. I was putzing around the house. I didn't go anywhere on Sunday because I know I sent Ron to the grocery store because mm -hmm. I just didn't feel like he, I let him go to the grocery store. He thinks he's doing me a big favor, so what the heck, let him. And, you know, then, and, and okay. Ron and the grocery store, it reminds me of his parents mm -hmm. because I would get so angry because my mother-in-law, um, she was a homemaker. That's what she mm -hmm. did. She didn't work outside the home um, all the years Ron was going growing up. Mm -hmm. So, but she didn't even do her own grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. And Dick would go to the grocery store, and it was always because he would say to her, well, you spend too much money when you go. Oh, You know? Okay. And it's like, my gosh, if I was at home, mm -hmm. you know, back then, it would seem to me that going grocery shopping, at least, you know, being able to just wander through the grocery store would be your big, you know, out of the house moment for the week, you know? Sure. Mine is coming here. But okay. <laughs> at any rate, so yeah, he would say, no, I'll go. He would do all the grocery shopping. So she never left the house. Mm. Well, so this grocery shopping thing, his father always did it. So he thinks he should. Okay. And it's just like, okay, well, That's fine, okay. whatever. Yeah. I don't have to deal with it. 
fine. That's right. You know, you go for it, honey. So I sent him to the grocery store and he did the grocery shopping. And the only reason I know that that was the last time my car was driven is because of what was on the radio. Okay. Oh, okay. So I get in the car yesterday um, to come out here uh -huh. and I'm listening to what's on the radio and I'm going, oh my, this car literally had not been driven anywhere. Uh -huh since Sunday, because he had, he changed the radio station. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's crazy weird. Mm -hmm. Not this, normal. No, this whole teaching from home thing, it's bizarre, mm -hmm. you know? I'm, I'm settling into a routine. Good. Okay, that doesn't mean I like it any better. Right. I hate it, all right? Yeah. And, but yet, I'm kind of, you know, just chalk off another week. Mm-hmm. So, I think I'm going to have to find one of these retirement apps. And I'm oh, just going to yeah. have to put in the number of days of school left. Uh -huh. Because I really don't, you know, I used to, in, when I was in the classroom, I used to always have a, like my lesson plan book. Yeah. And I could write think notes to myself in my uh -huh. lesson plan book about days. I, I would uh -huh. do this literally every year. We get back the first Monday after spring break. We get back that first uh -huh. Monday in April. I would literally count down the number of days till okay. the end of school. I would just count out the last quarter. Mm -hmm. Well, and so everybody that I knows that I that I would work with knows that I do that mm -hmm. and they'd say how many days Amy, you know? Yeah. I'd always do it every year. It was just the, okay. just a thing. Well, now I'm thinking, you know, I should do that. Mm -hmm. Now. Yeah, I had a a countdown app on my phone for like 6 months or 8 months before I retired. Yep. And you can change the backgrounds. Well, I'm thinking and I need to do that. And actually, you can, it counts down like four different dates for you. If you have, you know, more you want to count down. Oh. Yeah. I could count down to Til Derek's. Christmas. I could count down to Derek's wedding. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could count down lots of things. But, sure. so anyway, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Because after this year of dealing with this crap and teaching mm -hmm. from home, no. Yeah. Just not into it anymore. Yep. Yeah. And it, it took me a long time to get used to working from home when they sent us to work from home. But it was less than a year, and then I really loved it. Well, I can see how a person would. I mean, let's face uh -huh. it. I live in sweatpants. Yeah. Know? Right. You know, and that could be good, and that could mm -hmm. be not so good. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah. I think I'm going to have to start counting down. Yeah. Yep. So, we'll see. I'll let you know next week how many days of school are left until I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Because that'll be the number of days left in the school year. Mm hmm So then people will know how many of days their kids are left in have left of school. Mm-hmm. So, it sounds like yeah. something I could do. Sure. But, uh, so that was my, that's my thing for this week. Okay. I have to set one, one unique goal. And the other thing I'm going to do is organize my knitting projects. Okay. You know, what I want to accomplish. I have to have a plan. I have lots of things coming up that I want to knit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing the Hohe Fall Knit Along. That's why I did that. I was going to say that counts, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was my first. I signed up to do three projects, and now I've got the Odyssey shawl, mm -hmm. and I've got the Jody shawl, and I've got the yarn already. I haven't wound it yet, so I want to do that. Then... Um, there's this pigskin I'm investigating. It starts actually this weekend. Pigskin something or other unravelry. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a different, like a knit along through the football season. Okay. And you have teams and for, for finishing mm -hmm. projects, you get points and there's challenges in there. And okay. it just sounds like a whole lot of fun. Okay. You know, I mean, for a person who knits a lot, I can rack up points. I have fun sure. with that, you know? So it's kind of like fantasy football. For knitting. But using the knitting, just like they do Tour de France. Tour de Fleece, yes. For Tour de Fleece. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's along those lines. Okay. So, and that was, the, the the gal who runs it, her name on Ravelry is, I think, Boston Jen. Oh, yeah. Um, And her podcast, and she's the one that runs it. Okay. So, that's why I was listening to her podcast today. Because uh -huh. she's got all the skinny on it, on her podcast. Okay. And then, of course, there's more in her Ravelry group. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, you know, talking about podcasts, 
I think my new favorite podcast is Fleece and Harmony. I have not listened to that one. Oh, they're sisters on Prince Edward Island. And they have a sheep farm, and they have a mill, and they dye their yarn, and they sell it all, and they have a store, and then they also sell Rowan yarn, too. Um, but they're very limited. They only have their yarn and Rowan yarn. Mm -hmm. And then their accessories are just cocoa knits. Okay. So um, very limited, but, I mean, they have, like, all the Rowan yarn, all okay. the colors of all the yarns, so... Yeah, so, um, but they're really funny to listen to, and yeah, I just, I like listening to them. Well, some of them are video, and some of them are audio, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking I like audio better, because then I can listen while I knit. Mm -hmm. I don't like to watch. Oh, okay. Well, it's because I don't knit, like, at the table where I can put uh -huh. my computer there. Okay. I knit in my chair, and there's yeah. no, you know, I'd have to figure out what I'm gonna do with my computer. I don't watch. Oh, I watch on my TV. Well, you got a smart TV, right? No, I got a Roku, which is like a fire stick. Well, oh, I maybe when I, when we bring the deck TV in, that one has Roku on it. Yeah. When we bring that deck TV in and hang, and put it in the um, sunroom for the winter, mm -hmm. um, I'll try it. Yeah. That works really nice. Good to know. Using a big TV. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, I sit in my recliner, put on a podcast or two. Okay. I'm exploring few. these new things for my retirement life. Yeah, yeah, you got to get ready. <laughs> the new technology. <laughs> I got no <laughs> TV. <laughs> My no tech t my no TV kind of knitting world, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, but at any rate, so yeah. Yeah, cable companies are not going to do well, you know, with uh, the new generation, because right now our generation pays a lot of money to have a lot of channels on their TV. True. And kids that are coming up now, they don't care. They'll just have the internet and they're done. You know, they well, might you know, subscribe to one or two on although, their own. Although. Ron did uh, analysis of uh -huh. what should we do with our cable, uh -huh. all right? And he figured out what channels we would have to pay for, like on our Roku. Uh -huh. And he literally compared between cable, keeping our cable, uh -huh. and going to um, just the Roku, okay? Uh -huh. We'd have to keep the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, and once we kept the Wi-Fi, and then you started looking at what we were paying, we were paying for certain services on the Roku um, that we want to keep. It, we, it didn't necessarily save any money. Oh, see, I dumped cable more than a year ago. Mm -hmm. I haven't missed it. Oh, I, I'm sure not. Yeah, I haven't missed it at all. I, I use th Roku strictly. Um, and I'm fine. And yeah. that's $70 instead of 144 Well, the, see, there's things on the Roku, though, that we would want that you wouldn't necessarily want. For right. example, in my house, I want the Golf Channel. Uh-huh. So there, you can pay for now, um, a, like, a streaming service through YouTube. Right. For $6 a month or whatever to get it. Well, but if you want different packages, they have different oh, packages. Yeah. And if I want the Golf Channel in that package, and it's the same problem I got with cable. Uh -huh. Okay, if I want the Golf Channel in my package, I got to go to this level. Ryan was, my, our son Ryan was talking about what he does because he says he's all Roku too. Uh -huh. He just has um, cable internet. And... Um, we were trying, you know, because he's, uh, and he was saying, Mom, Dad, you could just do this. Sure. But once we calculated what we were paying for cable and compared that to what we would be paying, it ended up being a, um, literally $10 difference. Oh. So for $10 difference, it was not worth the effort. Because, well, and see, mm -hmm. we've also got a landline thrown in there. Yeah, I do too, but that's only 10 bucks. Well, how 
was more than that. We're paying more than that for. Oh, are you? Like Mine's that. only ten dollars. Yeah. I gotta cancel it. it. I just had it for Cadence, and she's not there anymore. So it literally has not been used in over yeah. three months. No, we have the landline because with owning a business, um, there are people that don't call Ron's office number; they call our mm. house. Yeah. Hey, Ron. I, you know, and so we have we kept the landline. But now, when he retires. Yeah, you won't Maybe. need that. We won't need that, and that might be nice to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. will bring down those costs. So yeah, we're starting mm -hmm. to you know to really pay attention to those costs because there yeah. are things that we want when we retire and things we can give up, mm -hmm. and we're just trying to figure out which ones are which. Right. Yep. So that's kind of fun thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It is. Yep. So. Yep. Here she's so. knitting away on this thing. Yes, I am. It's getting so close to being done. I just want to be done. I know that feeling. So, yeah. Well, I, I promised Cora that I would take her to the um, fabric store to get her Halloween costume oh, started. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, so, um, if I when I go home, if she, well, she'll be done with school by now, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's done by three, so. It's after three, so we're mm -hmm. good that way. Um, but she was going to go play with her friend Riley. Okay. Because she hasn't seen Riley, because you know she's back up in Green Bay. Right. Uh, for school, although she's doing virtual, because Green Bay School District went virtual. They oh. did, there is no hybrid up in Green Bay. It's all oh, virtual. Oh, okay. So she's got times where she's got to be online, and then she's got times where it's work time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's a you know I. It was funny yeah. yesterday because I'm teaching, you know, online and she's learning online and uh -huh. well, she's got her meeting on, going on over here and I got my meeting going on over here and I'm going, wait a minute, you need uh -huh. to be downstairs or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was crazy, just uh -huh. crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, so Liz said with the virtual, Luke was really good, you know, in all of his stuff until this week and then... He's totally distracted now. It's like he's bored with the Zoom meeting. He, the Zoom meeting can't keep his attention anymore. He's fine at doing his work, but she said during the Zoom meetings, he doesn't want anything. And I said, well, get him a, a fidget spinner or something mm -hmm. that you can just spin with your hands. And she says, oh, I don't know if that'll work. And Mrs. White won't let him have anything to fidget with. I was like, well, that's silly. Hmm. So I don't know what's going on there. But, yeah, so I don't know how that virtual is going to work out for him. Well, it won't be forever. Yeah, I hope not. And, and to be honest, kids are resilient. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll, you know, if they, I mean, these two years of between the tail end of last school year and going mm -hmm. into this school year, I know that there's a lot of people that are choosing to be in the brick and mortar, and who knows how long that will last. But right. um, those of us that are in the virtual world, are we have every intention of going back mm -hmm. to the brick and mortar world. Right. Um, and you know, so hopefully maybe second semester, I don't mm -hmm. foresee it happening now yet. No. Um, and, but maybe second semester, but you know, mm -hmm. as much, okay. I, I'll be honest. I hate teaching online. I truly hate it. Mm -hmm. It's not what I want to be as a teacher. Right. However, I'm pretty used to this staying at home stuff. So, uh -huh. the thought of getting up and getting dressed up and going to uh -huh. work every morning? Yeah. I'm kind of used to that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, we'll see how that goes. Sure. I come Jan into January, in the middle of winter, I'm not sure uh -huh. I'm going to want to get up and get dressed and go to work. Exactly. So, I might as well stay virtual this whole school year, whatever. Yeah. I'm already into it. Right. But yeah. uh, no, yeah. I, I I know kids kids need to be in school. Mm -hmm. But there's a, I look at all the the families that I'm dealing with and and just in getting to know the kids. I mean, there's a lot of kids that you know they live with mom and dad and grandma and grandpa. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the 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 idea of the kids bringing something home. Yeah, maybe the kids won't get sick, but you know the idea that well we might kill grandma and grandpa with it. That's just well, not good. Yeah, you know, exactly. and and that's why tip families typically are choosing virtual. Yeah. Um, you know, or if there's somebody in the house that hey, maybe, you know, ha a parent might have some underlying health condition that this could be really bad. 
if the kids brought something home from school. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of families are choosing. Um, but yeah, I, I, 52 kids, it's amazing how many kids I got. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and I'm not the only fourth grade teacher. There's three of us who, if, you know, and that's just the fourth graders. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's close to a thousand elementary age kids doing virtual. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. so. All right. Okay. Well, you're at the end of the row now. Yep. Yep. I just got to increase and knit two and I'm done. Oop. Yeah, you missed that. Getting through the back loop. Yep. Okay. There we go. Got she one finished row a row. Now one I row. Need three more, and then I'm binding off. Okay. No new yarn in the store this week. Lots and lots of needles. More needles, needles. I do like those chai goos. Yep, I got lots of chai goos. I got, oh, I bought a bunch of cords. The Knit Picks cords. Um, or the Knitter's Pride. Knitter Pride, right. What an owl, oh, boy. Can't talk. Um, and then I got some Zing little nine inch. So yeah, lots of needles, crochet hooks, whatever I needed to fill the shelves. So. You, I was amazed when you told me how much yeah. you go through needles. Yeah, we order needles at least every other week. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. You know, I was sitting here thinking my next size on my cowl is the three. And darn it all, if my three isn't tied up in that shawl I'm working on. Mm, I got a 16 inch three in here. I don't want a 16 inch three. I want a 24 inch three. Oh, I don't know if I had a 24 inch three. 24 inch four, 24 inch four. Oh yeah, look at it, right there's one. All right, problem <laughs> solved, I guess. Yep. Okay, but now the question is, do you mix your needles? <coughs> Oh, I do. I don't care. I never think it's enough to see the difference. Wow. Every once in a while, though, people do bring in a sweater. And they split for the sleeves. And then on the sleeve, they use a different needle. And I can see a ridge right there. I can often see a ridge. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and the thing is, I have been known to because I know I've seen that ridge when I've done it, uh -huh. and I sometimes can't help but wonder if I tighten up when I go to the magic loop for those sleeves. Uh -huh. um, and so I don't know. Okay. I, I, so I've I'm... seen the ridge yeah. on my knitting, and so what I started to do was do my sleeves right away. Uh -huh. And then that ridge goes away. So oh. I can't help but wonder if I'm working on, you know, the, the raglan part or the, the yoke. Uh -huh. And I get those sleeves off and I can't help but wonder if you're working in that same mode all the way through the body. And then when uh -huh. you switch to the magic loop, because all through the body you're going round and round and round and round. But then when mm -hmm. you switch to magic loop for your sleeves, you're using a different technique. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's that. I thought maybe it's when you're taking your stitches from your holder and putting them onto the needle, if you're stretching them out. That's a possibility too. You know, I, I wonder. But I know I do see it. I saw it again this week. A little ridge of stitches that look just a little bigger. So, hmm. Well, and if you do your sleeves first, yeah, you, you wouldn't see that. You wouldn't have had them on a holder. No. That's why I'm, I'm going to try that on my next sweater. Yeah. But then the problem with it is, is that then, when you're doing the rest of the body, you got these darn sleeves hanging all over the place. Yeah, you do have to kind of tuck them in a little. Yeah, well, I'm thinking if you take those sleeves, then while you're working on the body, and turn the sleeve inside out, it'll uh -huh. stay to the inside of your neck. Right, right, yep. And that might and then solve tuck the problem. It down through the neck a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Do something sure. like that just to get them out of your way. Yeah. So yeah, because I'm gonna start that red sweater. So. Yeah, I don't think you notice it. that ridge once it's washed and blocked and stuff, but it's just yeah something I notice. Wonder what she's looking at my knitting. Oh no. no, there's a ridge in my knitting, and Joanne saw it. Oh no, I would tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She would, too. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, no, she would tell me. She would point out all of my flaws and imperfections in my knitting, without a doubt. <laughs> That's all right. I would point out hers, too. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, that's mm. funny, though. Oh, well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. I think we're done for this week. Hey. Sorry about the two phone calls. Yeah, well, whatever. It's life in the fast lane, right? Yeah. All right. Talk to you okay. next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.